Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, December 15th, 2020 meeting of the Ashland Zoning Board of Appeals. In accordance with the requirements of the opening meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast by WACA. The town of Ashland in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus is currently following the guidance from the Ashland Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. To participate remotely from a computer, please use the link that's been provided in the uh, agenda for this meeting that has been uh, posted, uh, or there is a meeting ID and passcode, which you can enter, or there is a telephone number you can dial uh, and enter. And again, that will all be found on the uh, agenda. We will call the meeting to order at uh, 7.01. Uh, and I haven't done this before, but Emma, do I need to have the, uh, the members of the board um, identify that they, are, uh, that they are present or just being on the video good <clears throat> enough? I think we need to have them identify that they're here, do we not? Yes, yeah, it has been clarified that um, okay. we should do a roll call attendance. Okay, members, when I, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative that you are here. And obviously, if you're not here, you won't be replying in the affirmative. Um, Brian Forrestal. You're muted, Brian. Here. Uh, Stuart Siegel. Here. Nathan Band. Here. And we have a new associate member uh, joining us for the first time, uh, Charles Chuck Green. Uh, Chuck, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, and Emma Snellings, please respond to the affirmative if you are here. Here. Okay. And um, we do have the applicant's representative here. So I would ask uh, attorney George, George Connor to answer in the affirmative as well. I am here. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think that uh, I think that uh, does all of the the niceties that we need to do in these times of uh, COVID-19. I will read the uh, notice of the meeting. We do have a public hearing tonight, a special permit request for 10 Metcalf Street, Metcalf Street, and the Ashland Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, December 15th, 2020, uh, at 7 p.m. via Zoom video conferencing, accessed at the uh, information uh, that you will find in the agenda, uh, agenda, to hear the petition of Judith Barbieri of Ashland, Massachusetts, requesting a special permit per chapter 40A, section six of the Massachusetts Zoning Act and chapter 282, sections 3.3, non-conforming uses and structures and 9.3 special permits of the Ashland bylaws to allow for the construction of a 30 foot by 40 foot building on an existing non-conforming undersized lot. The property in question is located at 10 Metcalf Avenue, assessor's map 13, lot 90 in the industrial zoning district, Ashland downtown district sub area A, and solar overlay district. Parties wishing to be heard in this matter shall appear at the time and place indicated above. Materials may be viewed at town hall during normal business hours. 
or at the uh, Town of Ashland uh, website. And for more information and to submit comments, please com contact Emma Snellings at 508-532-0100, extension 7930, or at esnellings at com. Uh, before we um, start with the uh, applicant's representative, um, I'll just outline the uh, the process that we will forward this follow this evening. Um, it will start with the applicant's representative uh, presenting the uh, petition. Uh, board members will have an opportunity uh, at that point to ask any questions. Uh, that board members wish. And we will then open the uh, hearing for uh, public comment. Uh, I see several names on the, uh, on the Zoom screen uh, for people that uh, may be observing the matter and may wish to comment. So we will have that opportunity if you do wish to comment um, after the uh, presentation by the uh, attorney and questions from the uh, members of the board. All of that being said, I will now turn the matter over to attorney Connors. Thank you. Um, we have a lot at uh, Avenue. It's a substandard lot. The zoning district is industrial. It requires 30,000 square feet of land. We have 12,000 540 square feet. It requires 150 feet of frontage. We have 147.01. That lot was created back in 1964. Uh, I had included a plan that was created by McCarthy and Sullivan. And in the uh, endorsement for the creation of the lot on Metcalf, there was uh, this lot number two and a lot number one. In the endorsement, there is a note that it is subject to a variance. We tried uh, searching for that variance. We could not find it. We did a diligent search at the Registry of Deeds under all sorts of different names and um, different addresses, different street names. We could not find that. I contacted the town clerk. She could not find it. I also contacted the uh, town planner and he indicated in the letter, which I included um, an email, which I included mm -hmm. in the uh, submission that uh, it, the variance could not be found. Um, having said that, if you do review that particular plan in 1964, there is the lot that's above this, it shows as a house. That lot has 6,125 square feet of frontage. And this particular lot has 12,600. So I think it's reasonable to assume and axiomatic that there was a variance granted to it, although we cannot find that. Notwithstanding that, it's uh, still less than 30,000 square feet and still a little bit shy in frontage. However, it is as big as most all of the lots in that area. Um, in that area, it is separated from the railroad track, which is to the south, just be, uh, below the um, parcel that shows adjacent to it and to the east of it. It's owned by a um, Spinozola. Attorney Connors, if I could just stop you there. I just want to make sure all of our members can, can hear you. You're somewhat, somewhat soft, and I want to make sure. Can everybody hear Attorney Connors okay? Nod your head yes if you can. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Attorney Connors. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll attempt to speak louder. Um, and we have a uh, building that's going to go on that lot that's 30 by 40. We've uh, matched the frontage, I mean, the setback from the front uh, to the house that's just to the uh, north of this, so we can keep the building closer to the road. The existing site is generally an open graveled area. It had been used for storage of equipment. There had been a couple of trailers on it over the years. There is actually a water and a sewer connection to it. Those will be replaced um, for this new building. The building will be near the street on the more northerly end of the uh, uh, site. There'll be an access of about 25 feet to get through on that side to some uh, formal parking behind it for the uh, people that may be in the building. And then to the south of that, it will be an open contractor's yard, similar to what's there now. 
the grading on that particular site is almost dead flat. It's elevation 194 in the street uh, down by the uh, uh, concrete paved area that's to the south and 194 in the back. It does drop off to 193 as it approaches Nizola property to the east. Um, the building is going to be 12,000, uh, 1,200 square feet, and it is a uh, metal building. There was a picture of it in the application package that uh, has a door in the rear and some garage doors in the rear so that we have minimal impact to the street in the front. And the uh, area surrounding the lot's perimeter and bisecting it from the building back towards the Spinozola property will be excavated with a uh, stone infiltration mm -hmm. trench for stormwater management. Because the lot has been uh, previously uh, raided off and graveled, the uh, conditions of the lot are gonna be exactly the same with respect to stormwater. There's a complete stormwater report that had been uh, included. Now, um, this particular uh, use is a pre-existing non-conforming change of use we're, supposed, we're suggesting. And we do believe that it meets the requirements for that. For example, it is a uh, community need. There are many landscapers in the town that go out and take care of properties in many surrounding towns. This is gonna be really no different than that. There are landscapers and contractors on Metcalf Avenue. There's a propane dealer uh, in that area. Uh, there's some electricians and some other types of people. And we think that this is pretty much what is uh, in that neighborhood, including the land behind us, which fronts on uh, Forest Street. There is one house uh, that's just to the north of us, that 6,000 square foot lot. And we're proposing a uh, privacy fence along that particular property line. We'll note at this stage, we do have to go for planning board site plan approval. And that will be uh, taking place as you may have noted in our application, that whole package has been included. Um, in terms of traffic and flow and safety, the, access, the access from Metcalf Ave to Pleasant Street is a straight line up and down. Pleasant Street has absolutely yeah. a, um, optimum site distance. So we don't see any problem with that. This particular site has enough area for a fire truck can get in behind it and operate in case of anything needing uh, emergency services. The uh, utilities, there are water and there is water and sewer out in the street. We'll be able to tie into that and abandon the old utilities. So we think that there's no issue with that. Um, in terms of uh, overhead power, we want to drop the power from the telephone pole that's right in the utility pole that's right in front of the building. We don't see any need to go underground, but that may be a planning board issue at some point in the future. Um, the neighborhood character, as I've indicated, there are painters and landscapers and uh, garage mechanics. There's a propane distribution. So the area, it does allow for contractor and landscaper yard in the table of uses. And we think that um, is the same sort of uh, use that's in that area. In terms of the natural environment, it is really just an open uh, industrial type area, albeit for that little house that exists there. There are other residences that um, serve both um, uh, industry and um, residential along that street, however. And then in terms of the fiscal impact, we believe that there's um, employment opportunities for the people that will work in that particular building. Um, it'll pay much more taxes than it has been. And it will also be able to, um, to uh, clean up that area to some great degree. It's uh, an industrial kind of back area that really can use some cleaning up and some controls for the types of uses. In terms of um, the uh, area, there is a wetlands that exists uh, several uh, hundred feet to the west off Locus has no impact. Uh, along the train line, there is a open culvert, um, no manhole or anything, just an open pipe that comes along the tracks. So overflow water goes in that direction and would go into that obviously. Um, so we don't really believe that there's really any impact that this um, improvement to this particular site has. 
and I'm happy to respond to any questions or comments. I will note that I'm also with the engineering company that prepared the plan. So if there are any technical questions on the engineering, I'm happy to answer those. I want to just ask a question um, and it's it's probably a, perhaps a, a procedural question. Uh, I note in the application that was filed under paragraph four additional information, uh, the question is asked, are all real estate taxes and other assessments to the town current? And there is no answer, it is left blank. Uh, and in the copy of the application uh, to the planning board for site plan review, uh, the same question is posed and it is also not answered, it is left blank. And under the uh, provisions of the, the planning department, uh, in this board, no permit uh, will be granted unless all taxes are uh, current uh, on the property. Um, was there a reason why that question was not answered? There is a reason. I had asked uh, Mr. Barberi to um, uh, deliver this application. It couldn't be delivered and delivered. And Mr. Barberi indicated to me that the taxes had been paid and he would get that certificate from the town okay. when he did it. Uh, so it's this um, email type thing that. Um, okay. Um, we did, I did ask um, our town planner uh, to investigate the status of the tax payment on that. And I believe uh, Peter Matchett conveyed to our assistant town planner who's here with us tonight, Emma Snellings. So Emma, could you clarify where we stand on that? Yes, uh, Peter Matchek uh, checked in with the uh, treasurer and she confirmed that uh, the property is up to date on all taxes. Excellent, okay. Um, uh, you're, you've concluded your presentation, Attorney Connors? I have. Okay. Um, Questions from any members of the board? I have some questions, John. Mr. Siegel, go right ahead. Uh, Attorney Connors, um, can I assume that that we're the the owner of the property is just speculating on this building? We don't know what type of business will actually occupy this building. Uh, he has an agreement with. Uh, John Reardon, that John Reardon will be um, operating the building and perhaps purchasing. And what type of business is Mr. Reardon in? He's a landscaper. Okay. My second question is, uh, you mentioned that there would be a storm uh, drainage um, accommodations. Mm -hmm. Have they been approved by the uh, town um, board? For storm they've, been, water. they've been submitted to the uh, planning board uh, with this particular package. So the whole site plan and the uh, both be going before planning board and your zoning board have been submitted as one. They have not been reviewed. There's been no hearing yet. Okay, so that would be contingent upon their uh, feedback on that, but you don't anticipate any problems as an engineering um, consultant to the project? No, we're actually reducing the amount of um, uh, gravel surface by a few hundred, uh, actually a couple of dozen uh, square feet. So we're not increasing drainage in any way, shape or form. And we are providing for infiltration under the stormwater standards. We are providing 600 cubic feet of infiltration, which is three quarters of an inch storm. The requirement's a half inch storm. And um, we have a need for some 435 cubic feet. So we're exceeding what we have to put in the ground. It's certainly subject to review at the planning board and their consultants. My last question concerns parking for the uh for the structure, is there any kind of uh, plan for that at this point in time? So four formal spaces behind the building that would be entered uh, at the uh, northern end of the property. Those would be for uh, bookkeepers or some people who would be in the building all day long. And then the area that's called proposed contractor's yard 
which is behind and to the south of the building towards the railroad tracks, is just going to be storage for their um, construction uh, landscape trailers and um, trucks and things of that nature. Okay, um, I guess we have to, uh, I guess this, this question should be addressed to Mr. Reardon, um, but will any kind of landscaping debris that he gets from his potential customers be stored on this property or will it be disposed of immediately after, after the work is done? My job. It's my understanding, I did have this conversation with him, that they will not be so storing uh, waste uh, uh, lawn clippings or leaves on the property. Thank you, sir. Anything else, Stu? No, John. Okay. Um, Brian, any questions for Attorney Connors? Yes. Um, I don't know what the um, front setback requirements are but I'm wondering if you do, and also wondering why um, you don't seem to be thinking about adhering to them. The front setback is 40 feet. We have that on the plan. Uh, there is a provision in the Ashland Code that you can match the setback of the buildings in the area, and we thought that we would do that. We're actually a little bit more than the uh, abutting property to the north. Um, the reason that we put the building along the street is because it would help shield um, view of landscape material, um, trucks and uh, that nature, and um, really be a better uh, presentation to the street, in our opinion. And what's the setback of that home to the north or building to the north? The existing setback is six and a half feet. Our setback is six and a half. That building is a slight bit more, a slight bit less, more than that. We actually went a foot behind just to be safe. So that existing building is five and a half feet setback yes. and you guys are going six and a half feet. Yes. And, and what does that give you for space behind the building? Uh, it is 50 feet to 48.8 feet uh, from the closest point of the building to the lot line, but about eight of that or 10 feet of that is um, land that we're not going to use because we have the infiltration uh, ditch along that area uh, paralleling the uh, Spinozola property. Okay. Um... And you said you have 25 feet on the left side of the building. And what would the setback be on the right side? Well, we're looking at it and that'll be the left side. Uh, we have 22 feet of paving, uh, of gravel access. Our um, requirement is 30 foot side yard. We have, if I can scale it, make sure I'm to scale. We have just over 30 feet uh, to the north and to the south. We have approximately 65, 55, 65 feet I'm scaling, depending on which corner you go from the building. Right, because I angle. Oh, I see. Slight angle, yeah. Yeah. Attorney Connors, if I could just ask this question while we're on this point, you said that the the side yard was was the side yard to the house, which is at number number eight, is how many feet? That requirement is 30 feet. It requires 30 feet, but do you have that? I'm looking at the proposed site plan. And the only figure I see is 22 feet. That's 22 feet for our access driveway. That's okay. typically what fire wants. Our complete distance goes beyond that crushed stone infiltration, beyond where we're putting our fence okay. into that lot line. 
and that is just over 30 feet, probably 31 or 32. Okay, is that referenced anywhere on the the site plan that I'm <clears throat> I'm looking at? It is not. Okay, that's that's where my point of clarification was. I couldn't find that, but now I understand. I'm sorry, Brian. Back to you. I think I'm all set with that. Okay. Um, Nathan, do you have any questions? Uh, Mr. Connors, I was hoping you could give me a better sense of the existing use on the lot. What's what's there now? What's being replaced? What is it? Uh, what, some it time like? ago, there were a couple of trailers and various pieces of um, trucks and cars and um, some construction and landscape uh, vehicles. Um, the tra trailers have been moved, so the, it's basically an open lot. And it's got some debris on it, so it's been cleaned up a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Nathan? No. Um, Chuck, how about you? Any questions for Attorney Connors? Uh, Chuck, you're muted, so you'd have yeah, to unmute um, you. Yeah, there we no go. No questions at all. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Now, the, the two areas of nonconformity, just to clarify for myself, is the lot size, which uh, requires 30,000 and we're down to 12,540, and also the frontage, which requires 150 feet, and the lot has 147.01 feet. Um, that's correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, the various lots on um, on Metcalf, um, having driven down there and looked at them, they all none of them would seem to meet the thirty thousand square foot uh, requirement. Is that your understanding? It is. Yes. Okay. There there are a couple in the area, but not many. Okay. Okay, um, I don't have any further questions. If there are no further questions from uh, the board members, um, I will open the hearing for uh, public comment. If there is anyone who wishes to comment, uh, please either raise the hand signal or wave your hand on the screen. Um, and when I call upon you, identify your yourself, name and address. And it appears that there is a hand signal up for John Reardon. So if that is correct, Mr. Reardon, uh, we're, we welcome to hear from you. You just have to unmute yourself. Oh, I'm all set. Nope, that wasn't a question on my part. Oh, okay. Um, anyone else wishing to be heard during the public comment section? If so, please <clears throat> make yourself known or I will close the uh, public comment uh, section. <clears throat> no one having... Re yes, Emma? Uh, John, we did receive one public comment via voicemail. Um, so if we want to read that into the record. Thank you very much for reminding me of that. Um, there was a voicemail left at the uh, Department of Public Planning on uh, December 7th of this year. It was received by Emma Snellings and it was from, or at least as identified by the person leaving the message as Adam West. 11 Metcalf Avenue, Ashland. And the uh, mm. message was, uh, he called to support the project at 10 Metcalf Avenue, stated that it is better than what was there. And that uh, statement will be uh, entered into the record uh, of the hearing as well. And thank you for reminding me of that, Emma. Uh, any other questions for Attorney Connors? 
Mr. Chairman, I have one other question. Certainly, Stuart. Uh, with regard, um, Attorney Connors, you mentioned that uh, there is a proposed um, or a potential for a privacy fence. Will that work be worked out between the current owner and that house to the north? I mean, in it, it terms certainly of, could be yes. No problem with that. What type of what type of fencing? Uh, how high would it be? And so that you know that that's a potential question that's kind of up in the air. Um, has there been any thought as to how that would be negotiated? No, we had indicated we had uh, discussed that uh, we didn't want to have an impact on that abutter as a uh, residence. It's a kind of a nice little lot he has. He is furthest away from it being on the northerly part of his lot. So uh, we just talked about a privacy fence, which we assumed would be some kind of a stockade fence as we discussed ourselves um, among ourselves. Um, but we're perfectly willing to take some input um, in terms of its material or its uh, sound Proofing. It could be um, a plastic type material, which has a reflectivity, or it could be wood material, or cedar that would last a long time. It, it makes um, really no difference to us. Uh, Mr. Reardon just wanted to be a decent neighbor. Thank you. That's very encouraging to hear. I would just point out that uh, section 5.4 provides for general landscaping requirements uh, 5.4.2 uh, talks about a where a lot containing a non-residential use adjoins or faces a residential district or residential use. Landscape buffers shall be provided at the perimeters of the lot to screen parking and other vehicular service areas. In 5.4.3, uh, buffer areas and screening required by this section can comprise, be comprised of a number of different things, including wood fences. And if the fences are taller okay. than four and a half feet in height, then they must have plantings on the side facing the lot line. I'm assuming this is something that would be part of the planning board's um, site plan review as well. Uh, yes. So that it would be, it would be covered. Yes. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, why don't we go into discussion mode? Not quite at deliberations yet, but um, the discussion mode about what we uh, what we have before us. And Attorney Connor's presentation. Uh, to me, frankly, it seems like a fairly a straightforward um, application. Uh, I've been on Metcalf. Uh, Metcalf. Uh, it is as Attorney Connors in his application and his attached uh, submissions comments that it is an area of different uses. Uh, certainly, an, an upgrade with a new building. Uh, would um, would I think help the entire neighborhood? Uh, I, at this point, I would be uh, in favor of of granting the special permit. Uh, the three feet shortage of frontage uh, is almost de minimis, and the lot sizes there are all on that street are all sort of over the place, but it appeared very few comprised 30,000 square feet. I think this is another neighborhood in Ashland as others we have that we have seen where um, it's an older development, an older street and lot sizes uh, when the buildings were built uh, don't meet with the present lot size requirements. Um, so, I would think we have a we have a, a project that would be for the uh, for the benefit of the of the town. Um, Stu, your thoughts? I also concur with your assessment. 
Mr. Chairman. And Brian. I concur. Nathan. Concur. Okay, and Chuck? Yes, I concur. Okay, now we have to go through the various uh, requirements under section 9.3 and attorney Connors as he always does is very helpful in outlining what the applicant uh, proposes for those findings. Uh, I on the other hand am always reluctant to take them word for word because we shouldn't do that uh, and uh, but we do have to uh, we do have to make decisions on those. Uh, on these the first criteria we have to to deal with goes back to the non non-conforming use under 3.3.2 and we would only be able to make a determination, uh, to grant it if we find that the uh, allowance of the special permit uh, would not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, I would I would suggest that um, the proposal would certainly allow us to uh, to make that finding. Uh, does is everyone in agreement on that? Uh, I, Stu Siegel, agree. Okay. And Brian? And Brian Forrest, I'll agree. Okay. Um, and just for the record, at, at this point, we probably ought to designate who is sitting on the, on the hearing formally. Uh, and by way of explanation, uh, the chap chapter 40, uh, requires that the three members sit as the uh, deciding body uh, in making the ultimate decision uh, and that the associate members who are able to participate as we have this evening and ask questions, uh, but when it comes time to formally vote, uh, unfortunately, they are not, not permitted to uh, vote unless one of the three uh, members is unable to do so. And because we have all three members are present this evening and able to vote, um, Brian Forrestall, Stuart Siegel, and I, John Trefethen, will be the uh, voting uh, members uh, for the hearing decision. Uh, but having covered the 3.3.2 non-conforming use, uh, I think we're all set on that. And then going over to 9.3, the special um, permit conditions that we have to uh, decide. Um, the first one is community needs served by the proposal. Um, Attorney Connors has uh, indicated in his submission uh, that um, there is a need for the type of services that the building uh, could be used for. I also think it shows a significant improvement over the site uh, and would be a, uh, a nice addition to uh, that neighborhood without causing any undue uh, influence to the neighbors. Item number two is traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading. Uh, as Attorney Connors has indicated, uh, cars will flow in and out. Uh, parking will be in the back of the building uh, so that it would be hidden from a general public uh, view, uh, which would be an improvement uh, from what um, exists presently not only on this site, but on other um, other sites on the street. Um, adequacy of utilities and other public services. There is public water and sewer. Uh, number four, neighborhood character and social structures. 
Uh, it is an industrial zone. Uh, there are, as Attorney Connors has presented, uh, various uh, buildings and usages on the street, including a residential uh, building adjacent to this lot. There are other residential buildings on the street that appear to be uh, used in conjunction with uh, business operations on the street. So this would certainly seem to be in character with that. Uh, impacts on the natural environment uh, with proper uh, drainage, uh, there would not appear to be any uh, impacts on the natural environment in the area and potential fiscal aspect, uh, including impact on town services, tax base and employment. Uh, certainly there would be employment um, at the, uh, the people working at the building and for landscaping. And um, I would assume the, uh, the tax rate or the tax on this property would go up with a building uh, having been constructed on it instead of a vacant lot. Uh, those are just general thoughts. Um, Brian and Stu, is there anything that uh, you would want to add or that you think we should um, take back from that? Stu? Stu, uh, well, I, I wouldn't add anything, John. I think it, you've, uh, you've presented the uh, the benefits uh, and answer to those questions very well. Okay, and Brian, how about you? Yeah, I agree. That's a, you know it meets all the, the standard criteria, and as long as all the um, um, standard restrictions and, and okay. all that are put on it, it's, it should be fine. Okay, um, Emma, can you draft a decision that is uh, consistent with what we have, with what we have discussed, and have it available for our review uh, and our formal vote um, at our next meeting, because we don't are not going to be able to approve the decision until we see it in writing. Uh, our next meeting is normally two weeks from today, which would be December 29th. Uh, obviously, um, the Tuesday between Christmas and New Year's, uh, is that a problem for either you, Stu, or you, Brian? I'll be around. I'll also be around. As will I. So, Emma, is that convenient for you? Yes, and I would be happy to prepare a draft decision and um, provide it for review before the meeting. Okay. Well, then, assuming that that, um, that happens, um, I would anticipate that on the 29th, uh, we will approve the decision. Uh, typically, in these COVID times, as part of the decision, we also designate one person of the three members voting on the decision to sign the decision, uh, which requires only one of us to have to go to town hall to do it. So that if that uh, happens uh, as planned, we should have an approved decision uh, filed with the town clerk's office uh, before the end of this year. Okay, Attorney Connors, anything further? No, well, thank you very much for your time and for your patience and for your understanding. Thank you very much. Uh, I would entertain a motion to continue the hearing until Tuesday, December 29th at 7 p.m. So moved. And that was Brian Forrestal making that motion. Is there a second? Stu Siegel, I would second that. And all in favor, aye, John Trefethen. Aye, Brian Forrestal. Aye, Stu Siegel, agree. 
Very good. Then this hearing is continued until December 29th. Uh, thank you, Attorney Connors. Uh, Mr. Reardon, thank you for your uh, participation and observ observation of the, uh, of the hearing. And we now go on to our next Thank you. Item. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you as well, Attorney Connors. <laughs> We'll save the Happy New Year till our next meeting. I think so. <laughs> uh, okay, the next uh, item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of October 27th, 2020. Um, any, uh, any changes? Emma sent out the notice. Or a copy rather of the uh, of the minutes. Um, any changes to the um, to the minutes or any questions? Nope. Now all of us can vote on approval of the minutes that were present. It doesn't just have to be the the full members. Uh, so I, John Trefethen, approve the minutes of October twenty seventh. I, Stu Siegel, also approve the minutes. I, Brian Frost, all approve the minutes. I, I Chuck Green, approve the minutes. Chuck, I think you're going to have to abstain because you were not a board member at that time. You are correct. Sorry. But we appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> that was my first vote, and it was illegal. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and now let, let's not get into illegal votes. Uh, uh, the other next item, I think the last item on the agenda is the 2021 uh, meeting schedule. Uh, Emma sent that out. Uh, we continue to meet the second and if necessary, the fourth Tuesday of each month. Mm. The notice, the meeting schedule that she sent out also has the application submittal de submittal deadline for submitting applications in order to uh, be timely at the meeting. Uh, we only meet on the fourth uh, Tuesday of the month uh, if there is um, continued business from the second Tuesday of the month, typically. Um, does anybody have any questions about the, uh, the meeting schedule? No. No, no? Oh, okay. Um, then I guess lastly, Emma, is there any additional items under administrative matters or anything that we should know about? Yes, uh, we have received an application for a special permit um, and that will appear before the board in the first meeting in January, uh, January 12th. Um, and those materials will be going up on the website uh, very soon and I'll send out the link. Um, and we are still waiting for that 40B project to be filed. So no news there. Okay, very good. Um, okay, then. Well, I think... Um, Motion to not, adjourn. Not, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth, Brian. Thank you very much. You're speeding me up. Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion to adjourn? Identify yourself, please, by name as part of the motion. Brian Forrestal, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I still second then a motion. To <laughs> okay. I, John Trefethen, um, agree. I, Brian uh, Forstall, yeah, agree. Stu? I single agree. Nathan? I, Nathan Ben, agree. And Chuck? I agree. I, Chuck Green, agree. There we go. Okay, yes. then this meeting is adjourned. Merry Christmas, everybody. We will see you after the holiday on the 29th. Yep. Seriously.